Hello and welcome to episode 23 of Youth Squad Prospects 4 with Morecambe. Today we are going to finish off the January transfer window. We'll play against third place Colchester. We'll play SJH Porters and Touring Buses Tranmere Rovers. Then we'll face Cambridge United at the end of the month. And if there isn't much transfer activity during the window, I might play Perry NG's crew Alexandra. But before we get on to the proper episode, I've got to say thank you very much to everybody who decided to come over here from Cutsy Shout Out. I appreciate you very much. I went from less than 400 subscribers to 500 subscribers in less than a week. So thank you very much to Cutsy for shouting me out twice. And he shouted out most of the YouTubers in his episode of YSL with Macclesfield. Most of them weren't new to me. If you have a keen eye and read my descriptions, I do leave links down below for content creators who do this kind of series and I will be updating that list for today's episode so please go check everyone who's down there, it would mean the world to me if you subscribe to each and every single one of them. Now as for the new subscribers, I hope you enjoy my style of editing and commenting in the videos and this series is obviously inspired on him. I forgot to put this at the start of the recording, Pierce O'Neill got an offer from Al Shabab and it seems like he's on his way to Saudi Arabia and we've got some monthly scanning updates to go through Norway first there is Jonas running you might recognize that name 66 to 90 5 foot 6 he doesn't look that great we're gonna scan him for a further month though we've also got Steiner as 51 to 67 overall potential 70 to 94 he looks a lot better and we're going to sign him on bypass him completely. And he is the only one that we're going to sign up from Norway. Then a Will Wright from England. We have nobody. Surprise, surprise. And from Paraguay, the best one is Emigdio Ponce. But he's nowhere near good enough as well. What is Aurelian Castell doing? We've got a second loan offer for Pierce O'Neill. Alfaiha want him as well. He's definitely going to Saudi Arabia. The question is which club also got a transfer offer for Brian Duffy Beijing Renhe won him for 64,000 pounds he's valued at 90 that's what I'm gonna try and get if not try and meet somewhere in the middle let's see if they buy on the 90k they do we are off to a good start in the window O'Neill is going to Al Shabaab for the year of 2020 goodbye and we also have a second transfer offer for Brian Duffy. This one is from Forest Green Rovers. They have to match 90k. Same drill, let's try 90k. See if they bite on that. They don't. I'd take 85k, that is the minimum for Brian Duffy. They don't want to take it. Goodbye. And just before we play Colchester, we do have a kit upgrade to go through. The kit upgrade for the day goes to Bovang Tekka and it's from JJ Loza. He does a series with Porvel exactly like this. He's also just over 500 subscribers. Would mean the world to me if you went there and subscribed to that man. And uh, he went with the green and yellow boxing tape. Already had the high sock height interestingly. Untucked tight t-shirts and there's the Adidas Glitch World Skin 1 boots. Which do look quite nice on him. Bobang's ready to show off them techers now, right? The first game is a perfect one for the situation. It's YSP4 against YSP3. Eric and Gadwin Gadui, the manager, hosts his former side to his newly found home. It's first versus third. Starting lineup on screen, it's the first team side with a couple of changes. Chumacero is dropped for Russo. He has impressed me lately. And Johannesson plays ahead of a tired Erskard. EFL League 2 action here live from the Globe Arena. Eric and Gadu and Gadui is hosting his former side. Click on the top right for the playlist. We did a series with Colchester in FIFA 18. Best defensive team in the league now cleared ahead of Doncaster. Just the one goal. We've conceded only 19 in this season. Mainly thanks to that man on screen, the captain. Eric and Gadwin Gadwin's looking forward to this. Oh, cross in the back stick. Oh, what a save, McNeil. 
That is one cracking save. Check this out. The goal line technology there not needed. But you can appreciate the graphics at least. Solid left hand with the fingertips. Firmly blocks it away from the goal. What a guy. That's why he's the captain. Gallo. Oh yes, Gallo. You gorgeous man. Give it back to him. Yes, Gallo still got it. Yes, Gallo. Effort in. Good parry away by Baines. The Fresno whips in the corner. Kick to Gallo. It's tipped away by Barnes again. Dickinson and McNeil is there to cover his front post. This is why we've only conceded 19 goals in the season. Got a corner. The Fresno will whip it in. It's towards Morgan Lewis. Another great save by Barnes. Both keepers are stealing the headlines here. And that is half time. It's a goalless half, but a very entertaining one. I'm very proud of the performance put. And Colchester definitely rise to the occasion as well. Svensson, Santoro and Clark are run for the second half. Keeping the midfield fresh. Oh, cross back in. Neville's going to put that one home. Very well worked goal. Good ball out wide. And our nemesis has picked out a great ball onto Neville, the striker. And he just has to slot that one home. Little fancy bicycle kick. Good goal. Definitely flashes of brilliance left behind by Eric and Gadu and Gadui in the mighty Colchester. Mash, you know. Oh, cross in. What a pick out, Johannesson. Great clearance. Oh, ball. Dickinson, what a save by McNeil. Another save. If it wasn't for him, this game would have been wrapped up over the top. There is Norris, Tekka, great challenge. Oh, the referee's going to blow it. It's going to be that. It's 1-0 to Colchester. And I'm actually not sad for losing for once. Our opposition today has a special place in my heart, in Eric and Gadu and Gadu's heart. And uh, they won with the bicycle kick, which is fair enough. Both keepers putting on a show today. Bobang Tekka, great in the defence. Redenton and Lewis were alright. Tekka was the better one. McNeil should have had about like 8.5 or more. But because he can see that he gets only a 7.3. Up top was the problem. We could not get past Barnes in the Colchester net. Five saves by him and six saves from McNeil. This game should have had more goals. Brian Duffy has agreed personal terms with Renher and he is off to Beijing. Second game of the episode, we're away against SJH Sports and the touring buses Tranmere Rovers. Stunning lineup on screen, it's the first team side. A few changes from the team that played last time out. Redenton is tired, so Harris gets a chance in the first team. Erskard is back, and this time it's Johannesson who's slightly tired, so he doesn't even make the bench. Let's get back to winning ways. EFL League 2 action here live from Prenton Park. It is Tranmere's home ground. Fortunately, we don't have to deal with either Touring Buses Tranmere or SJH's Tranmere. We just have to deal with the real life Tranmere Rovers. There are no pushovers in this league. The Fresno. Oburn does have the time to play the killer ball. Russo making a run for it. Give it inside. Good ball. What a finish. It's first time by Thomas Oburn. That's how good he is at long shots. Don't even need to put the time finishing or the finesse. He just shoots it straight in. Keeper had no chance. O'Burn makes no mistake. And we've opened this game up like a tin of tuna. Like SJH would say. Uh, God, brilliant fake shot. And now he has the opportunity to send the main man. Michelle Gallo is away. He can't finish it. It's a good save by Davis. It's my bad. I didn't time it properly. Gallo. Great ball out wide. The Fresner picks out Erskard with ease. Yes, Erskard, what a finish. With a trademark sledgehammer cross goal. What a finish by Philip Erskard. That's why I rate him that highly. You know when he is on them kind of positions, he's going to sledge that into the opposite top corner. What a finish by Philip Erskard. Fifth goal in League 2. 
He's already achieved the same goals that he scored last season where he joined almost at the end of it. And that is half time, 2-0 to the Shrimps. A very good first half, probably the best first half of the season so far. And we are 2-0 up as we head into the locker rooms. Kisley, Santoro and Chimacero are on for Auburn, Cortez and the Fresno. It's the perfect opportunity to give back some confidence to the Bolivian striker. And uh, I couldn't take Erzgar off after that wonder strike. Yes. Good ball. Here is Chumacero DMA. Well, he tried to pull off the same volley Gallo did last episode, but it's the opposite outcome. And that is full time. 2-0 is the final score here. Not a very entertaining second half, but we didn't need it today. The, the first one was good enough for me. We scored the goals that we needed. We put in the effort, the attacks, and we kept on the pressure in the second half, and we have kept the clean sheet. Dominated this game from bell to bell. Tranmere Rovers had more possession, but that was mainly possession wasted on passing it around the centre-backs. Nicola Russo picks up the man of the match, 8.3 for him. In my eyes, I think Erzgaard should have picked it up. That sledgehammer shot is mint. Thomas O'Byrne also picked up an 8.2 and the scout future star picks up an 8.1. All four of them had a great day in the office. And uh, also very good performances by Mitrovic, Tekka and McNeil again with four very good saves. Third game of the episode, we're at home against third bottom Cambridge United. Starting lineup on screen, it's the first team side who's going to roll out here against Cambridge. Let's finish the January transfer window on a high. EFL League 2 action here live from the Globe Arena. We are hosting Cambridge United. They are third bottom in the table. This is a must win. Nope. Oh no, good save by McNeil. He rescues me there. That's a great punch out. Unbelievable reactions for the save as well. First guard lays sure it out wide. Stefan de Fresno will whip it inside. It Nobody home. Here is Russo. Finesse. There we go. Right into the top corner. Look at this. It's just too easy for him. He can score these kind of finesse shots from everywhere in this game. Picks out the top bins like it's nothing. And he has definitely earned a spot in my first 11. He's definitely earned a spot in the starting 11 with that curling beauty. And that is half time. 1-0 to Morecambe. Just cruising along here. For once we're not using the three subs just yet. Only the Fresno and Cortez going off at half time. Svensson and Kisley come on for the second half and Erskard drops to left midfield. Gallo's underneath it. Here is Gallo. Good save by midfield. O'Byrne. Good ball to Erskard. He's wide open on the left. He's just out of legs. Come on, Erskard. Push on. Yes, Erskard. We've hit the woodwork. And we have missed the rebound. Come on, Kisley. That should have been in. That is it for this game. A comfortable 1-0 victory in front of the home fan. Cracking goal by Russo. We could have and should have scored more though. In a bit in a boring game where there's only a goal, the goal scorer is likely to get them out of the match, and that is no exception here. Russo picks it up with a 9.2. Redenton did a tremendous job with an 8.2 as well. Erzgard and Gallo did really well going forward, did help out. McNeil with a 7.9. Finally, the goalkeeper gets some recognition. For his good performances. Five saves. And uh, Tekka as well. Doncaster and Colchester both dropped two points against Port Vale and Tranmere Rovers. Player of the Month award. We've got one nominee ourselves. There's Nicola Russo who had a superb month of January. The final game of the episode. We're away against Perry NG's crew Alexandra. Starting lineup on screen is the second team side that's going to face the Barmy Army. And that is because the fixture list is ridiculous in this game. We went from having two and a half weeks of rest ahead of the game against Cambridge to three days rest against Crew Alexandra. We'll try and win it anyway. Fortunately, Crew Alexandra have some tired players themselves. EFL League 2 action here live from Gresty Road. Here is Campbell. Good Croyston. Gets back. Tyler Clark, effort, get, oh, I thought that was in, 
I genuinely thought that was in. It's a good effort. He had the keeper beaten, but he dragged his shot slightly wide. Santoro will whip in the corner. It'll be the final chance of the half. Good save by Garrett, and it's eventually cleared by Reigns. That is going to do it, though. Nil-nil. And pretty much the only chance of the first half, you've just seen it. Brennan, Shaw and Ferrari are coming on. Oh yes, Campbell picks out Dylan Brennan. Space, lots of it. Ferrari back. That is beautifully played. It's Ellen Shaw who picks up the goal. Great counter-attack, pinpoint passing. Really good vision by Ferrari to give it back to Ellen Shaw. 1-0 to Morrigan. We finally broke down the bombing army. All right. Oh, good block by White. And a second is saved by Malley. What a save, son. Campbell. Yes, Ferrari. Johanna said, great ball. Dominic Baker for a second. And he smashes that in. In off the crossbar. The woodwork's not going to deny him the goal. Really well struck and really good pass by Nils Johansson. We are playing some delicious football right here. And ball inside, good save by Mali onto the post. And that is it, full time whistle is blown. 2-0 victory against Perry NG's crew Alexandra. I'm really happy with this performance. The lads have proven today they are a level above this league. Two shots on target for us, same as Crew Alexandra. Man of the match goes to totally agree that assist to Baker was really good. And overall, he carried it from the back and he deserves that. Ellen Shaw getting the goal with Ferrari's amazing vision to lay that one back to him. Greedy and White were impressive. Brennan on the right hand side was impressive, which I found really interesting. And Mali in the net, a few very good saves as well. Shows he's more than just a backup keeper. And Colchester have dropped points again, this time against former YSP. The first one in Carlisle United. Just before the end of the episode, we've got some youth scout reports available. And from Paraguay, there's really nothing here. Gerardo is the best one and he's not really good enough to be picked up. Eusebio Gallardo, what a name. Then from England we have a player, finally, thank goodness, Liam Griffiths. 54 overall to 72, 75 to 94 potential. 240k in the valuation, we're going to sign this player up. Jay Cox, what a name. I'm going to pick him up actually, he's got a good valuation at only 15. It might be something, you never know. And finally the two last players... Harrison Griffiths is not good enough and we already have another Griffiths. That would be really confusing. And Ed Turner, 52 to 70 overall, 67 to 91 potential, 350k in the valuation. He looks good enough, let's sign him up. Then from Denmark we haven't found anyone in the scout report and Runin has dropped down. Right, let's send the scouts back out. Matteo Stavaldini wants Alexander Sorensen to go to Brazil for any. Will Wright is going to go to England, but not for nine months, only for three, because I want to implement as many comments to suggest countries to scout. So I'm not going to be scouting England all the time, but I'm happy to do it for three months. He doesn't ask for any specific type, so we'll go with any. Finally, Aurelian Castel is going to go to Morocco. I can't remember the last time we went there, so I'm hoping for some good talent from Morocco. Unfortunately, Ruto didn't win the Player of the Month award. That one went to Sebastian Leighton, congratulations. As the table stands, we are 14 points top of the table. Ridiculous margin at the top. The rest, Doncaster keep on winning the Oval Town and Wickham are getting closer and closer to Colchester as well. Paul Vale, Gillingham round up the playoff spots and we are just cruising along in this season. So I hope you have enjoyed it. I'm going to see you all next time and until then, have a good one. Bye bye.